Hi everyone. Welcome back to my channel. In this video, we're going to take a look into the kill squad that murdered ex-mob boss Paul Castellano and underboss Thomas Bellotti. In the dimly lit corners of the criminal underworld, a plan was meticulously devised. John Gotti recognized that he couldn't accomplish his audacious goal alone. He needed a team, a lethal and unyielding squad, to execute the most significant hit in the history of Cosa Nostra. Gotti, known for his charismatic charm and cunning intellect, gathered his most trusted lieutenants in a secluded, smoky room. The atmosphere crackled with tension, as maps, photographs, and documents were spread across a table, forming the blueprint for their audacious endeavor. At the helm stood John Gotti, his piercing gaze and commanding presence filling the room. His reputation for fearlessness and brutality had earned him a place of authority, and he knew that this operation would define his legacy. Angelo, a seasoned enforcer with a calculating mind and unwavering loyalty, leaned back in his chair, skepticism etched on his face. He understood the magnitude of their target, Paul Castellano, a former mob boss who had fallen out of favor and was now heavily guarded. Hitting him would be a declaration of war, sending shockwaves throughout the entire mafia. But Gotti, fueled by a fiery determination and an unyielding desire for power, saw this as their moment. He believed that the time had come to strike, to dismantle the old guard and assert his dominance. He knew that success required the perfect team, an assembly of skilled and dedicated individuals, willing to sacrifice everything for the cause. Sammy, a tough and fearless captain, his eyes blazing with a mixture of anger and resolve, voiced his support. He recognized the risks involved, yet his unwavering loyalty to Gotti propelled him forward. Together, they delved into the minutia of their plan, exploring every possible angle, anticipating the complexities that lay ahead. Their objective was clear, to eliminate Paul Castellano and seize control of the empire he once commanded. The kill squad began to strategize, each member bringing their unique skills and expertise to the table. They would leave no stone unturned, sparing no effort to ensure the success of their audacious undertaking. In the shadowy depths of the criminal underworld, John Gotti's quest for power reached its zenith. With his team of seasoned killers, he embarked on a journey that would forever alter the course of Cosa Nostra. The kill squad was forged in the fires of ambition, ready to strike with deadly precision, their actions destined to reverberate through the annals of organized crime. Dominic Pisonia, Angelo Ruggiero, and Joe Watts formed an indomitable trio within the kill squad responsible for orchestrating the audacious ambush that resulted in the assassination of Paul Castellano. These three formidable mobsters, renowned for their exceptional driving skills, were the linchpins of the team, ensuring a swift and seamless escape from the scene. Dominic Pisonia, with his unassuming demeanor and sharp intellect, proved to be a crucial asset. His unremarkable appearance allowed him to blend seamlessly into the background, while his deep knowledge of the city's streets and expert driving abilities made him an exceptional getaway driver. Dominic's cool and collected demeanor, combined with his ability to adapt quickly to changing circumstances, earned him the trust and respect of his comrades. Angelo Ruggiero, a force to be reckoned with, possessed an air of silent strength and a reputation that instilled fear in his enemies. His towering presence and piercing gaze left a lasting impression, while his sharp intellect and unwavering loyalty to John Gotti were the foundation of his contributions to the Kill Squad. Angelo's driving skills were second to none, allowing him to navigate the chaotic streets of New York City with ease. His ability to maintain a steady hand under pressure and make split-second decisions made him an invaluable asset during the escape. Joe Watts, a seasoned mobster with a menacing aura, completed the trio of getaway drivers. Known for his relentless determination and unwavering loyalty, Joe was a force that could not be ignored. With a commanding presence and a reputation for violence, he struck fear into the hearts of his adversaries. Joe's driving skills were legendary, as he fearlessly maneuvered through the city's obstacles, his instincts honed through years of criminal activity. As the chaos erupted following the ambush, they flawlessly executed their roles, coordinating their driving maneuvers with precision, ensuring the team's escape while leaving their pursuers in disarray. The trio's unwavering dedication to the mission, their masterful driving skills, and their ability to remain calm under the most intense circumstances solidified their place in the annals of organized crime. Dominic Pisonia, Angelo Ruggiero, and Joe Watts were the driving forces behind the success of the Kill Squad, forever etching their names in the dark history of the Mafia as the legendary getaway drivers who executed one of the most audacious assassinations in the criminal underworld. Let's get to Frank DeChico. Frank was complex figure within the criminal underworld, was a loyalist to Paul Castellano, yet ultimately played a pivotal role in his demise. As a member of the Kill Squad tasked with executing the audacious assassination, 
Frank's actions marked a shocking betrayal of the trust bestowed upon him by his former boss. Frank's appearance belied the darkness that lurked beneath his seemingly unassuming exterior. His neatly groomed hair and carefully chosen attire reflected an attention to detail that masked the brewing storm within. Within the inner circles of the mafia, Frank had been a trusted confidant of Paul Castellano for years. His unwavering loyalty and dedication to the family had earned him respect and admiration. However, hidden beneath his facade of loyalty, a desire for power and influence grew, driving him to make a treacherous decision that would forever alter the course of Cosa Nostra. The weight of his betrayal weighed heavily on Frank's conscience, casting a shadow over his every move. He understood the gravity of his actions, knowing that by luring Paul to the fateful meeting at the restaurant, he had sealed his boss's fate. The internal turmoil he grappled with was etched in the lines on his face, revealing the deep conflict within. Frank's voice, once filled with conviction and loyalty, now quivered with a mixture of confused and anger. His eyes, once filled with admiration for Paul, now held a somber gaze, burdened by the weight of his betrayal. He had made a fateful choice, forever staining his reputation and the bond he once shared with his former boss. As the ambush unfolded, Frank's role in the operation was both a participant and an observer. The remorse and guilt that consumed him were palpable, as he bore witness to the violent end of the man he had once revered. The echoes of the shots fired reverberated in his soul, forever haunting him as a constant reminder of the price he had paid for his thirst for power. Frank DeChico, a loyalist turned betrayer, stood as a symbol of the complexities within the criminal underworld. His actions, driven by ambition and a desire to reshape the balance of power, forever altered the trajectory of Cosa Nostra. The weight of his betrayal and the consequences that followed would forever part of organized crime history, reminding us of the treacherous path one can walk in the pursuit of power. Salvatore Scala, Edward Lino, and Tony Rampino, three loyalists of John Gotti, formed a wolf pack within the kill squad responsible for the chilling assassination of underboss Thomas Bellotti at the infamous Spark Steakhouse in Manhattan. Salvatore Scala, a figure with a commanding presence, possessed an air of authority that demanded respect. His steely gaze hinted at the raw power he held within. With a reputation as a fearless enforcer, Salvatore's trigger finger was as lethal as his reputation, and he played an active role in executing the deadly plan. His precise aim and unwavering determination were on full display as he pulled the trigger, ensuring the swift demise of their target. Edward Lino, a calculated and methodical mobster, was the perfect complement to Salvatore's raw aggression. With a calm demeanor that masked his lethal skills, Edward was a master of deception and precision. His keen eye for detail and quick reflexes made him a lethal force in executing the plan. Standing side by side with Salvatore, Edward unleashed a hail of bullets, extinguishing any trace of mercy or hesitation. Tony Rampino, a trusted member of the team, served as a backup shooter, stationed around the block from the scene. Tony's role was to ensure that the kill squad's plan proceeded without a hitch, ready to intervene if the need arose. Though he didn't have to utilize his weapon during the murder, his presence was a testament to the level of preparation and caution exhibited by the team. Tony's dedication and loyalty to John Gotti were unwavering, and he stood ready to protect his comrades and the interests of the family. The three mobsters, Salvatore Scala, Edward Lino, and Tony Rampino shared a deep bond of loyalty and unwavering commitment to John Gotti's cause. Their participation in the assassination of underboss Thomas Bellotti demonstrated their readiness to eliminate any threats to the family's power and uphold their allegiance to the Cosa Nostra. Their actions, executed with precision and unwavering resolve, sent shockwaves through the criminal underworld, solidifying their status as trusted and ruthless enforcers in the realm of organized crime. Another pair that was part of the hit squad was Vincent Artuso and John Carniglia. Both were loyal to John Gotti's faction and played integral roles within the group responsible for the brazen assassination of Gambino boss Paul Castellano. As they stood side by side on that fateful day, their actions would forever change the course of Cosa Nostra. Vincent Artuso, a hardened enforcer with a reputation for fearlessness, had prepared meticulously for the mission. However, fate had a different plan. As the pivotal moment arrived, Vincent's gun jammed, throwing him off balance. Despite the unexpected setback, John Carniglia, a seasoned mobster with a calculated demeanor, proved to be the critical component in the mission's success. As the sole shooter responsible for taking Paul Castellano's life, his accuracy and precision were unparalleled. With a steady hand and a resolute focus, John delivered the fatal shot that ended Castellano's reign. His unwavering loyalty to John Gotti and the Gambino family fueled his every action, and he executed his role with ruthless efficiency. In the chaos that ensued, Vincent Artuso quickly adapted, and got in the getaway car. 
Vincent Artuso and John Carniglia, both loyal to the Corps, exemplified the qualities of trusted soldiers within the Gotti regime. Their actions that day cemented their reputations as formidable enforcers who would go to any lengths to safeguard the Gambino's family's power. The mystery of the gun. According to Sammy the Bull Gravano, Little Vinny's gun jammed and never fired during the Castellano hit. Others argue that Artuso couldn't shoot because he didn't have it in him. Okay let's talk John Gotti and Sammy Gravano, the last two of the Castellano hit squad. John Gotti and Sammy Gravano, two strategic masterminds, orchestrated the meticulously planned murder of Gambino boss Paul Castellano, forever altering the power dynamics within the Cosa Nostra. From their vantage point across the street, parked in a car, they oversaw the unfolding events with calculated precision. The charismatic and brutal John Gotti was a man of unyielding ambition who rose to the top of organized crime. Gotti, who is renowned for his ability to think strategically and exploit opportunities, was the main organizer of the scheme to take out Paul Castellano. He inspected the area with a cool, controlled demeanor, prepared to guarantee the operation's success. Sammy Gravano, a trusted confidant and skilled tactician, stood beside Gotti as they oversaw the double homicide. With a reputation for meticulous planning and an intricate understanding of the inner workings of the mafia, Gravano's role was crucial in executing the carefully choreographed attack. Armed with a walkie-talkie, he maintained constant communication with the shooters, providing them with instructions and updates to ensure the mission's success. As Paul Castellano and Thomas Bellotti's car arrived, Gotti and Gravano watched intently, knowing that their calculated plan was about to unfold. The street, filled with tension and anticipation, served as a backdrop to the imminent violence that was about to transpire. With their eyes fixed on their targets, Gotti and Gravano held the power to reshape the criminal landscape. The sound of gunfire shattered the silence as the shooters executed the deadly plan. Paul Castellano and Thomas Bellotti, both unsuspecting victims, were mercilessly targeted at close range. The multiple shots fired from guns of different calibers sent shockwaves through Manhattan. John Gotti and Sammy Gravano, the orchestrators of this audacious act, understood the impact these actions will have on the Genovese family. The double homicide would reverberate throughout the criminal underworld, leaving an indelible mark on the history of the Gambino family. Their calculated planning, strategic oversight, and meticulous coordination ensured the success of the mission, forever solidifying their positions as formidable figures within the realm of organized crime. The legacy of John Gotti and Sammy Gravano as masterminds behind the murder of Paul Castellano would lead to a future full of violence. Their calculated ruthlessness allowed them to strike first against Paul Castellano's faction. Okay, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more character breakdowns and analysis of your favorite gangsters. See you in the next one.